Hello and welcome to Tennessee Valley this morning. WTMB Joe, Kim Palo, it's Wednesday. We were not here yesterday. Thank I goodness. Know, thank goodness. For you, for I us. know, for you. <laughs> we do want to thank James and Stacy Dunn. Yeah, who did sit show. in yesterday. Absolutely. Had a great show. James, of course, Simon J. Productions, James and Stacy, they do our productions. We're, we've got kind of a marriage. Right. You know, it's kind of like he uh, makes Bob, the magic happen. Bob, Ted, Carol, and Alice. Is that what it was? Was that kind this movie? Bob and, Car Bob and Ted and I Carol don't know, and Alice. Joe. Uh, we don't sing the bed or anything like that, like <laughs> in that movie, but... I call him Walt Disney. He makes the ma yes, magic he does. happen. He, he does. makes everybody does look good. a great good. job. Yes, and they did a great job yesterday, uh, so uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. Now, we're here today, yes. so now it digresses. It goes from here <laughs> like right. this. It's downhill <laughs> from there, tomorrow. Hump day. <laughs> That's right. You know, we've got uh, a great show in store for we you do. today. We've got, of course, our local resident historian, Ron Moore, right. who... Uh, Great history uh, he always imparts upon us. And again, what he doesn't know, he makes up. But he does such a good job that you would never <laughs> you know it. Just don't know. Uh, and we also unless you have, look it up. Unless you look it up. <laughs> but we also have his lovely wife, Debbie Morris, yes. here today as well. Who uh, She's the brains author. behind all the history. I mean, if you yeah. really want to know the truth, Debbie's the one. I mean, well, Debbie's like the reason of for the history. Right. I mean, you know, it just, it just that's just the way it is. Right. All, you know, all together. Regina Williams is here, and she's, you know... A good, you need to stop oh, with really? Debbie and Regina <laughs> being the brains of their operation. Because uh -huh. I will give them that. Okay. But it stops there. <laughs> uh, no, we'll take it one more step. Stacy and James. Um, I think it's kind of across the board. You no, just don't know it. Okay. No, it's not. Uh, but in any case, you mentioned you already stole my thunder because we were saying Debbie Moore. Right, and uh, she has written a book about, I think uh, it's the women that were left here during the Civil Confederate War. Confederate voices. That's right. And I think it's mostly with the women that were left, you know, you, you don't think about that, but I mean, almost every male um, of any age, you know, fought the Civil War, yes, and right. uh, there were a lot of women left behind. Brothers to, against brothers. Right, and, right. And they had to carry the brunt of what, you know, everything, you know, the the cows and the chickens. Somebody and had to cook. Stuff, so, <laughs> you better watch uh, out. There's three of us in the studio. Right. The and the reason why one, none of those ladies had a watch <laughs> is because there is a clock on the stove. <laughs> Debbie doesn't think you're funny at all. Okay, it's okay. I'm not even looking over. <laughs> Debbie Moore, Confederate Voices local author. That's right. Regina Williams. Yes, Clay, Clay Divas. Divas. And mm -hmm. it's school time. That's right. School's coming back, so now we've got some some great, uh, well, we'll let her talk about that, some of the stuff she has. Oh, she has great stuff all the way around. She does, so, yeah. but the school she thing is, shows your spirit and all that kind of thing because that leads into my next thing. Very excited. Football Friday. For two reasons well okay football has started it has and football has started <laughs> two very good and reasons. i'm really excited about that too i mean a lot of women get upset when their husbands you know they call themselves football widows i mean i'm like at least I, it's a while it's like a three hour period that i you know i can hear him yelling and screaming it's at the tv and that but i know, do players, I, but. and then i do impart some information to you that that we hear about from different things because i do know you care i do care joe and so I'll tell her things that I've heard or seen. How nice. Uh, on that is my, so nice of you right, to do that. On uh, my network, ESPN. Right. Uh, or the NFL network. Um, and, well, and on, I guess it's on Showtime this year. It's the Miami Dolphins. No, it's are, on HBO. On HBO. Hard Hard Showtime Hard, is okay. the Miami Marlins. Marlins. Okay, both. Miami Marlins. And something about those Miami teams are, they have had a We hard, get on TV. A lot of hard Kim. knocks going on down yeah. there. So we got the hard knocks. That's right. Which started uh, last night. So we're excited about hard knocks, Miami Dolphins. I know. And then, as you mentioned, which is good too. We do. We are excited. There's really three reasons. <laughs> football Friday. Right. That's starts, our local football. Right. August 17th will be our and very Cleveland first. And Cleveland loves its football. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've got and great Cleveland teams. Right. Uh -huh. I'm glad we're not like, uh, I'm glad Cleveland is not like we talked about the, um, the Olympics. This Olympics is still going on. But I'm, I'm <laughs> really? glad we don't like the city of Cleveland's got the name of Cleveland and not, as we said, like some of the names of some of these new countries that have just, you know, come up from nowhere all of a sudden, <laughs> like Gabon. Gabon. We talk about, I have right. to mention that again. Gabon is a country. There you go. And, and you're a Gaboner. people that li no, <laughs> people that live there are Gabonians. Gabonians. Gabonians, See? and we're Clevelanders and Gabonians. Right. But Gabonians. Well, we're Americans mostly. And I'm not though. trying to offend anybody from Gabon that's watching. I know you guys are watching in Gabon. Uh, you're all sitting around one TV set. 
Um, but Gabonians <laughs> sounds like a slang. I am so sorry. <laughs> Kim, how many Gabonians are watching? In fact, <laughs> if you're watching this show, you are a Gabonian. <laughs> how about that? Gabonians, I mean, that's the name of those folks. I, and you've got to think that they had to think, there's got to be a group going, look, we're going to have to change this. <laughs> we can't be called Gabonians. That sounds like a slang. That's right, because Palo's making fun of us over there in Cleveland. Right, right. <laughs> Watch this guy. Everybody come gather around the television <laughs> that we have here in Gabon and look at this guy. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, interesting things going on. But America, we have now went ahead of China. Well, and not to mention, the girls are, are, are doing it. The women are doing they it, are. you know. Yeah, they the girls have won more medals than the men. I mean, b brains, beauty, and now uh, athletics. Kim, There's they, not they, anything we Kim, can't do. First of all, first of all, it has better. to do with the... Most everything uh, better, It has to do actually. with the medals. gymnastics. Right. Now, nobody... See, I'll do that. Or I'll no do one. my I'll do no my, <laughs> my 15-year-old girl. Nobody... <laughs> See, uh, even is going to like a girl. beat Go there. our man <laughs> Michael Phelps with twenty what two? Right, and that's true. I mean, the, 20, a woman held it 20, for many, many 20. years. A woman held the record of, of medals, and you but know, Phelps. Broken. Right? Yeah, forgot I, about her. You know, but that's she all wasn't right. even from here. <laughs> it doesn't matter. She was a woman. Well, we don't know that. <laughs> Oops, I mean, sorry. you know, I mean, some of those other countries. <laughs> she could have been a Gabonian. <laughs> then it's a little, you know. Oh, but um, but yeah so but so Michael Phelps a great show. Can has we got commercial? 18 gold medals, mind you, more than anybody, more than more, medals all across the board. And I was telling you in the car, and I know you're very interested, but <laughs> I saw during the Olympics that you know gold medal winners, every country like gives them a little kind of a bonus for winning the gold medal. In our country, if you win a gold medal, you receive like twenty five thousand dollars. But in other countries, like in you know, the mother Italy. country, right. Italy, you get like $180,000 for a gold medal. All right. right? Uh, Too bad they don't because, have cooking as a, like pasta making well, as a competition. And that's because, and you got that. that's because they, you know, they know they went like, you know, they go in and say, hey, he's getting a gold medal, isn't he? You know what I'm talking about? He's getting, a, and then you say it enough to where they're like, yeah, I get it. So that's worth $180,000. And then, I, don't, I forget what country it was. It was one of the Asian countries, I believe. I, I want to say Korea, but I, don't, I, I may be wrong about that. But they receive what's equivalent to us, $800,000. I wonder how many gold medals they've Not won. Not very many, that's right. why. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, in my mind, see, I'm always thinking, so maybe those countries, maybe it's like Gabon, where you got one set. Maybe nobody's watching it. So you take, if you win a silver or a Oh, are you an idiot? Really, you're going to say this? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I won a gold medal. By the time they scrape that off, you oh, got your 800 grand. You're, you're, in, you're in, living in America, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Or Gabon, if you want to go there. Uh, so anyway, so we got a great show. We got Ron so you and would Debbie cheat Moore. At the Olympics, huh? You would cheat at the Olympics. A lot have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, Kim, better men than you have cheated, listen, right? <laughs> exactly right. It's not how you play the game. It's whether you win or not. <laughs> So you have that's a how I look at it. All right, let's go to commercial and right, come Ron back. And Debbie Moore, I'm there. <laughs> Ron and Debbie Moore, Regina Williams on the way. When we come back with more Tennessee Valley this morning, stay tuned. The gold spray paint. <laughs> at Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast. Phone 
Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flash screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. Shut up and leave me alone. I didn't hear that. What, what you said that to me, woman. I said that. Uh, but hey, well, we are joined by our, our good friend, the lovely Regina Williams of yes. the Clay Divas, who brought some nice jewelry that they, they have there at the Clay Divas. Kim knocked over her little thing there. <laughs> they spent the last 20 minutes trying to fix her. I know, and Debbie Moore was over here Debbie with her back helping, and was worried I mean, that the camera was going to come back. It was hysterical. And, and, then, then, and then I think even Tracy Shellhouse showed up <laughs> to help <laughs> right. she put did. those back. <laughs> but, but anyway, we're back in, in, in good mode now, and thank you for coming, Regina. You're I called her last welcome. minute, and she came running, and I'm very excited to see your new stuff. You've got great stuff. Well, we do. We are... Um, getting ready to um, debut our new collection that's called Cowgirl Diva. All right. And you know, in fashion and home decor, the new thing is a little flair of Western. Right. So we've created a line that um, I think will be really popular this fall. It looks really good. So I mean, it's really, she's got some good stuff. We've uh, kind of copied um, stones. Right. And so this is, I guess, for the uh, ultimate Tennessee, Tennessee Cowgirl Diva. Absolutely. Ooh, I mean, that, that would nice. be great. I mean, to wear to yeah. the game or just to I the so, people's too. homes. I mean, you know, everybody exactly. does that on Saturday. It's a big thing to go. It and the is. earrings that match, how we cute do is have that? matching earrings. And then this is one of my favorite. This is... Um, this is a cross oh, that's with a nice. zebra design. With zebra, and it looks like turquoise. I mean, that is so it beautiful does. how you do that this with those stones. This was kind of designed after um, something that's called uh, blue chalk turquoise. I had okay. no idea that anything existed, but, you know, it comes in so many different colors. Yes, it does. So. But that but is beautiful. That's just a little sample of our new stuff. But what we're really excited about are the school spirit designs yes. that we've created. And you have some examples there right. uh, on the board. Sure. We've Put been doing... Um, so the close-up can see it better. Yeah, we've got county schools, city schools, elementary schools. All right, um, this is Walker Valley. Uh -huh. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you've got the Walker Valley, and then you've got the uh, Cleveland Middle School, mm -hmm. right? And you've got Tennessee, of always, and then there's the Cleveland High School. And we have um, Park View. Park View. All right, no kidding. We yeah, have a, you have all kinds, and there's a bear paw. How cute is that? We have a pretty good selection. Yes, you do. And uh, recently, we just got an order for a uh, pendant that's a football shape, and the, uh, the the young lady ordered it because her boyfriend plays football. So we're going to oh. put girlfriend of number whatever. Uh -huh. That's a neat idea. I'd rather have that than a t-shirt any yes, day. I would absolutely. I and would. Our, I feel like our prices are very reasonable. There, oh, they are ten dollars for the hand painted pendant and you get the little rubber snap cord. Let me ask you, Regina, if, if like that, that particular, if that, that young lady that has it, how long is that gonna take for you to make that from start to finish and her pick it up? Uh, well, you do things in steps, so, you know, all total, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Oh. But I tell her that she can pick it up within just a few days. No Because, you know, we like to have time for the glaze to cure. Right, sure. right, and, right. Um, But, you know, I have several other jobs that I do, so right. <laughs> I try to work that in, like, in between laundry and cooking. Right. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we can get that to her right away. And one of the things that we're really excited about this year is we've offered some of the school systems a chance to sell our jewelry Okay. And for we will right for fundraisers, clubs, cheerleaders, different teams. Uh, we can give them a very reasonable rate, and then that way they can turn around and make a profit. Uh, that's a little bit better sometimes than having the books candy. that yeah, candy. The, candy. Yeah. the wrapping paper, yeah. the candles <laughs> that we've yes. all we've, we've either all sold it or we've bought it. Yes, we have, <laughs> and I've done it both. <laughs> <laughs> and so these are items that you know they can continue to use. Um, this is. Uh, we just recently had an event with the city school system, right. so we've created a lot of city school items, but these are our fabulous keychain bracelets. Yes, and I have to show you guys that the last time that Regina was here, she brought me one. This is the most wonderful thing it in is the a world. Great you just it, it's got it's 
got elastic, you know, in it, and you can see it, first of all, in your purse. And for those women, you know what I'm talking about. You can't find your keys. You can find your keys with this, but if you just want to slip them on your, your wrist to run into the yeah. store or run in, you way. know, you don't have to take, and it really is a great, I love it. Yeah, I just I love it. Too. And I get so many people say, where, what is, where'd you get that? That's <laughs> well, so you have them in school colors. We do. We have them in school colors, and uh, you can come in and create your own design if you want. Just tell us what you're interested in. Another thing that we're excited about this year are our teacher lanyards or even student ID lanyards. Oh, well, you can yeah. uh, have the name put on. A lot of times we'll put something on the back to, to make it a little bit more personal, like initials or something. That's really popular. Oh, well, yeah. And um, also... A new thing that we have mm -hmm. done are the ink pens, and I yes, think, I think I yes. Joe, got Joe has, has one. Right, he does. Did. He has a dolphin colored. So one. we've also done those in school colors, and as you know, they're replaceable. You just you don't throw the clay part away. Right. You just put your ink refill back in there, and you're which good is to go. a big refill. Basically, it is a big refill. And so it's pretty fun, and we don't yeah, you is. don't have to buy just you know school colors. Colors, We've got some, right? You can some really fun. Oh, that one's oh, really neat. cute. Hot that one's with, hot pink and sassy. Yes, lots of glitter. So there's lots of things to choose from. I love this one. It's hot pink and lime green. That's really popular with right. the There was a candles. camouflage one that I didn't even see. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I really think it was in your hand. Oh, yeah, this one right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really paisley, but, yeah. that, but that one's kind camouflage. of cute, too. I know. Those, you know, and, and you talk about, like, the one you gave to me was the dolphin colors, and you mm -hmm. said the school colors. And you got to remember, folks, you know, these are great gifts as well as not just for yourself, but you can give these to your teacher, to your principal, score a little point, uh, to your girlfriend, <laughs> to your girlfriend's mother. Um, yeah, but. Then, but you know, and, and we are, we, we've got all of Bradley County, Meigs County, Ray County, mm -hmm. McMinn County, Polk County, northern part of Hamilton County. So there's a lot of schools in that area with a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. Uh, and you guys can make any of them. We can do, we can do anything that uh, pretty much you can imagine. Um, we're real excited about these because it's a $5 gift. Yes. Right. You know, and where can you find anything these days for $5? And a right. keepsake. Yeah, exactly. Keepsake. Um, well, it's just you know, and it's it's it'll last forever. It I mean, because you can you replace, is, but yeah. yeah, all the time. And our jewelry, all of it is so inexpensive, and it and it looks like I mean, it doesn't look inexpensive. It's really great. I just love it. I mean, it's it's a great thing. And coming up for the holidays, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this is those ornaments that you're doing this year. Mm -hmm. You did a few last year, yes, and I've did. had one made for um, my. Uh, my sister-in-law, we're real tight, and she made me one for that. But that's something you guys want to think about is giving, you know, Christmas ornaments that are personalized. Yes. And you do a beautiful job with that. You can do a theme. I think yours was the beach. Yes, it the was. The beach theme, and those are lots of fun. Or you can just do initials, um, right. just about anything you can think of. Or if you have a theme that you use in your home, certain colors. Feathers are really popular yes, again. Yes, So that's something that you can do. And we've also added... Uh, signs this year we are doing like teacher signs and oh, yeah. on the uh, ribbon we add clay beads and things just to embellish a little bit more so all lots kinds of, of things stuff. in lots the works. Of things out there yes. and, and this is from a family of crafters too this is um, you have your mom involved and it started mm -hmm. off because of your sister yes. um, with that and so it's a family uh, owned and operated business truly family and you guys do a great job and I just love seeing all of your stuff now you're only open on Monday Wednesdays and Fridays right. Monday Wednesday Friday from 9 until 6 and we do have certain times we'll have a special Saturday that we are open but anytime that you feel like you want to come by and see something just give us a call and my mother is five minutes away and she'll meet you down there and um, let you come in and shop, have a little private shop. That's right, have a little private moment with the yes. clay. Now, now what I want Lots of things, right, that, if, that are in the store, but you also custom make. Yes. That's, and I was gonna say, in, in custom making something, is there such a thing as an order too large? I mean, like let's say that you mentioned the cheerleaders, let's say the cheerleading team wanted to get, everybody gets a necklace or whatever. And I know you can do that, but I mean, like, turnaround time, something like that, would it take, you're talking an hour each, you're talking a few days, you're talking... Well, since my mother and I do them together, we'll right. kind of split that up, and she'll do one part, and okay. I'll do another, and, you know, we've turned things out in an amazing amount of time, um, you know, give us a week at the most, okay. and we can typically turn it around, and we have done some 
very, uh, what I would consider large number orders, like 80 keychain oh, bracelets yeah, at okay. a time. You know, we had several weeks, but our goal is, is to get started on them, get them completed, and move on to the next right, project. Right, right. right, and that, I mean, for those of you out there that even churches, I mean, for mm -hmm. fundraising ideas for yeah. your children's programs or teens, you know, anything, even your missions, I mean, at yes. that, there's a lot of fundraising, and, and honestly, these, the, if, if you're doing it for the keychains, they, they are, they are a wanted, I, once you really see it and you use it, you, you yeah. will, you will want one, and you You'll will be never able to go sell back that's to right, I think guys. I could sell these, that's what I would do on the side, I'd sell your keychains on the side, I'll fundraise for a, for for my widow front fund, Joe. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so so when I so when, when you what so when you what kids so, so when, when no one can There's find Joe. Watching. I know when he disappears. <laughs> um, you see how, see what I got to put up with you, Jane. You poor thing. I'm telling you. Tell it. <laughs> um, it's so, because of the clock on the stove joke, Joe. That those you just there can't do that. So. <laughs> uh, so but uh, so you're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, can somebody give you a call and, without stopping in and just say, listen, can you make, you know, kind of tell you on the phone just an idea of something that they have and you guys kind of develop it from that? Absolutely. Um, I've had someone, you know, send me an email or send them a picture of something that they saw online okay. or in a magazine. And uh, we just chit chat for a few minutes and get the specific information if you need a certain length, right, something like that. that. If you even have um, sensitive ears, a lot of times mm -hmm. ladies can't right. use just the mm -hmm. regular inexpensive base metal so that they need that hypoallergenic so we can do that too wow. for the sensitive ears so and you also have themes I know that that you had like the uh, uh, breast cancer awareness mm -hmm. uh, the pink you have some of those items you've got, and then you just do you have uh, like animal print you have all different kinds of things that and turquoise the turquoise is beautiful we uh, would like to expand on the, the um, themes for, you know, like the breast cancer right. awareness and the ovarian cancer. We're hoping to be able to expand on some of those things too. Because a lot of people feel like they um, want to be able to, to wear that and show either support for support, someone or right. for themselves. Right. And it's a way to start a story about, you know, what they've been through. So right. it's a good therapy sometimes too. It is. Now let me ask you one other question because as you're talking there, I'm thinking. So uh -oh. could somebody possibly get like either a necklace or a bracelet that has stones that maybe each stone means something and then they add to it. That is possible. Um, we are kind of branching out into different style bracelets, more less less elastic and more with the fastener, mm -hmm. but those also can be created because I know that's a very popular look right now. It is. And we have, um, this is one of my mother's creations, she's created a prayer bracelet. Oh. And it has different beads for different things and different things that you might want to um, pray about. Different beads have different colors, different meanings. So she's put those together. And I think that would be a super thing for church fundraising yeah, absolutely. events. Absolutely. absolutely. So, and it's, it's a good way to start a conversation and share with someone else. It is. It is. Well, that's yeah. it. Very beautiful stuff. Very, and, and again, you know, I mean, I don't wear much of that. I know Kim does, <laughs> and she enjoys it, and uh, that's good. Um, but uh, you, now, I will ask you this. Other than the pen, you did give me a pen, but do you have stuff for guys? We do. There is a keychain, and I brought an example here. If you don't want anything there like a go. bracelet. Oh, look at that one, the football Yeah, on this has a, a little football. bear. Oh, is that not cute? And the little hand-painted bear. Bear paw. Bear it's paw, a, yes, actually. That's, yes, that's some Bradley so bears for I the guys. I think that would be something very, that very nice, that's yeah. um, more masculine. Absolutely. And fit down into your pocket well, if that's mm -hmm. where you keep your keys. So. See, Joe, you need a turquoise. We'll, we'll have her make you a turquoise and orange one. How there about that? There you go. That? See, thank you very You're much. You're welcome. With a little, with a little dolphin. dolphin. Yeah. You can paint a little dolphin on there. That's are you, are yeah. you happy I'm, now? I'm you're excited. Gonna get, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get a present. I'm going to get a present. He's going to get a present. I'm excited. Get a present. All right, I'm a little excited. I know. Um, so, uh, again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, you're open from? 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. or by appointment. Right. Okay. So they can just stop in any time in those hours, they those can. three days. Um, Except for lunchtime, you are Yeah, we do close for lunch for a couple of hours. Two, two hours. Two they, hours. They have great, great, great <laughs> lunch breaks. I'm like, I we want do. to have lunch with it's, them. It's an important thing to have <laughs> that right, break in the middle right, of the is, day. It is. But you can call, and we do also have a website. So right. Claydivasdesign.com, and um, you, have, you can order from there, but most people... You know, we'll just come by the come shop the so store. they can see it in person and try it on. And they're very conveniently located right across, they're on Mouse Creek Road, right across from Jenkins, uh, Jenkins right there in Williams Chiropractic. 
uh, office who happens to be her husband. So <laughs> pretty handy. <laughs> That's pretty handy. Get an adjustment Happen to be located and get a necklace. In <laughs> That's right. Change hats quite often. That's right. She does. She does. Well, thank you so yeah, much you for so coming much for and you. bringing your stuff. I just love it when you come. And this is some really, I mean, she's really got some good looking stuff, guys. You need to go by the shop and see it. And also, if you're ready to get your school spirit on, it's time to do that. And, and the big day that, is tomorrow. So, yeah, so today, and know that Regina yesterday. just, it was yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Regina just brought some of what they had. Oh, they yeah. have a lot in the store. You yes. need to go by and check out what they have. Get some ideas for yourself, yes. too. Lots of great gifts. Right. Great gifts at a great price. Regina, All right, thanks again, for thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate right. you having me very much. All right. See, Kim? See? Pick something out there for yourself. <laughs> You're too good ah, to be Pick it out. I'll get it for you. <laughs> All right, we're going to be back with more Tennessee Valley this morning. We have Debbie Moore and Ron Moore on the way in just a few. Stay tuned. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Welcome back, Tennessee Valley this morning. Joe and Kim Palo with you. It's Wednesday. We are now joined by Debbie Moore, local author of the book, <laughs> Confederate Voices, in stores now? Not no, yet. not yet. Not yet. Okay, We're soon to be in We're almost there. We're almost there. And uh, let's, let's, first of all, thanks for being with us. Well, yes. it's nice to be here. I started this project, not this summer, but the summer before and thought, I'm going to kick this book out in about four months. It's going to be real short. It's going to be real simple. I'm just going to talk about the women that were left here during the Civil War. But then it kind of got expanded from that. What happened in the 1930s, the members of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, or the 1920s even, started writing down the stories of local soldiers and the women that were left behind and their own family members that fought in the war. And they're these wonderful old typewritten <laughs> I'm sure someone wore some fingers out <laughs> typing on those old manual typewriters but nothing has ever been done with those stories they're just they, they just exist 
So Mrs. Winston Campbell called me and she had a copy of all of the documents, about 200 pages. And she said, at my age, I can't do anything with these, but I know after you read them, you will do something with them. And I just couldn't ignore them. So I started looking for pictures to go with the stories. And it has turned into a 234 page book. Wow. 250 photographs. Wow. And uh, the index may kill me, but I'm going to make it through it. Are you going to make it through because it? Because there are uh, just numerous names on it's every page nice. and uh, the names of battalions. And Now, wow. if someone's wanting to read a military book, this will not be what they want to read. Right. Because it is just a book about common people in very uncommon times. Right. And um, the women were just left here to fend for themselves. Yeah. And I think my favorite story in the book is a little story I call Sweet Revenge. There was a lady here and her name was Mrs. Eldridge and she lived up about where Anatole is now okay. on, on the old Eldridge farm and uh, she was there alone, just her and her children and the Union soldiers came in and they went to her spring house and they drank what milk they wanted and they drank what buttermilk she had that they wanted and they poured the rest out on the ground and she kind of fussed at them. She said, you know, I have children to feed. You should not have poured my milk out. So at, at that, they took her butter out and they made little balls and they were throwing it at a target and just laughing and hooting and carrying on. Well, she just went back to her house and after they left, she sent her children down there to gather up the butter, which she proceeded to make gingerbread out of. And then she sent the children down to the troops to sell them the gingerbread. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of my favorite stories. Oh, good uh, for her. Good for her. In the book, too, I also highlight local buildings that were, were here when the Civil War was going on. I have pictures of the old Hawassi Bridge, the wooden bridge that was burned. Um, <laughs> several times. Several times. By both sides. By both sides. <laughs> and uh, it's just a really um, interesting look at at people. At people. And I think my favorite guy in the book, his name is uh, Jonathan Returns Meggs Only. Okay. He was named after the famous guy, Jonathan Returns Meg, but his last name is Only. And um, most pension applications were four pages long where you, you know, proved your service. Well, he was a little bit wordy and his was 52 pages long. Well, see. Did he and get denied? <laughs> he got denied, I think because the pension board just thought he was crazy <laughs> or, or perhaps annoying, and they could deny if they wanted to, and I think they just did. He was the only person in McMinn County that knew where Governor McMinn was buried in, in Calhoun, Tennessee, and he was in an unmarked grave, and he refused to tell because they were going to move the body to a bigger town, Athens. Mm. So he wasn't out making friends, and finally, uh -huh. he finally agreed to tell them where the body was buried if they would put the monument there. And it is in a little tiny cemetery in Calhoun, oh, Tennessee. Wow. So he was quite the character. He was a preacher, a lawyer, a writer, <laughs> a painter, a builder. He says he built a Charleston Cumberland Presbyterian <laughs> Church. And, he, and to read his uh, pension application, you will have thought that he was the only person in the war you know, oh, if they yeah, needed well, a volunteer, he was the first one there, you know. Oh, and, yes. and and so he is just a real hoot to read. I just put the entire thing in there. When I typed it, it was about 20 pages. <laughs> but if you like someone that's a character, he's a good one. He also decided that Dixie wasn't quite written right, so he rewrote oh, Dixie. He, oh, well, well, there you go. Yeah, there so, you go. Joe, you guys have a lot in common Well, see, I'm sitting here while you're telling me that. I, I was already had the punchline in my head. I'm thinking... He told them where the grave was when they gave him his pension. Because that's what I would have said. You give me my pension, I'll take, you know, not just put the monument there, which was he was looking out for, for which yes. was a great thing. Well, it was just kind of a crazy thing, too. Yeah, well, you yeah. know. Right. Um, but he was, uh, he was quite the character, and, and he'd spent a lot of time in prison, so you kind of get a, the, not <laughs> Sounds prison. Sounds a lot like me. P-O-W. He was uh, a P-O-W. Uh, <laughs> And uh, a lot of the troops from this area ended up at Vicksburg, which was horrible, right. just horrible. Yeah. And uh, they ended up in the prisons like in Fort Delaware. And I had never heard of Fort Delaware and I had never heard of Camp Chase in Ohio. Uh, women here locally were sent to Camp Chase. Oh, right. Children in their arms were sent to prison. And so you hear a little right. bit about that too. You told us about that, yeah, before about that, that they went through some really, for really, 
not really mm -hmm. doing anything for just being somewhere at the wrong mm -hmm. time of day. They they were so so strict on so many things, but you couldn't you couldn't be by yourself and adhere to all of those That's those, right. those laws and things that that women mm -hmm. had to come across. So well, we had a, a fella here uh, named Joseph Vaughn that was one of the leaders in the Confederate Army, and all the women at his house were arrested and taken to prison. They hadn't done anything; they were just his relative. Oh. And so later, one of them married a northerner from Ohio, and um, one of the women greeting her there in Ohio says, well, Miss, Mrs. Nixon, I imagine that you've never been uh, to Ohio. And she said, oh, yes. <laughs> I spent four years in Camp Chase. And so uh, it, it's just a, I hope that it's going to be an enlightening book that just tells that side of the story because history has a tendency to the victors Right. The story is told the way the victors want it to be told. And I think you can even see this today that when you go to like a Chickamauga battlefield, there's all these huge monuments for all the Union troops and things and then just the little markers, the ordinary little markers that said, you know, thousands of Confederate troops were there. So I think it's still, even at that late date, was told the yeah. same way. Yeah. And it's hard for us to even begin to understand with the country because we've never, that's the only time we have been at war, mm -hmm. you know, in our own country in a sense. And that the women, and, the, and it was so young, I mean, they were young boys that were carted Terribly off and going young. in. Very, very young and the mothers. And, and I think that's very interesting and very insightful of you of, of thinking about, you know, what they had to go through because you really don't think about it. You, you think, think about the heartache and the loss and the division of family. You always see that, you know, but as far as the real responsibility of carrying on and maintaining these larger farms and, and mm -hmm. uh, any type of work that we And that the uh, people that weren't exactly the guerrillas, they're called in the book, um, they're not exactly a member of either side, right. but they're just going around and and taking all the horses and all the livestock and, and burning things and bothering people. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were a force to be reckoned with. Oh, I, really? No mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah, you don't even think about that because it's it was a, a really wild time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, there was just not a lot of stability anywhere during that time. I'm anticipating that the book will be uh, printed and for sale, we hope, by September 1st. What? Okay. It's a pretty fast turnaround these days. Now, where will we find Why don't you? you hurry up and get that index well, <laughs> done? <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. It has been a real challenge to, to pay attention that long to do that. Well, we'll, we'll be running advertisements in the, in the local newspaper. I think that we're probably going to pre-sell books starting real soon. We'll be selling those on, we'll be announcing that on Old Town Cleveland, too, on Saturday mornings on uh, Whoop right. Radio. Okay. Yes. 10 to 12, we're on there. And um, we will probably have it locally at some mm -hmm. of the shops too. So sure. And we're going to have some book signings and and it's but exciting. I know. It's I'm exciting. really excited, and I, re you know, I'm a, I'm an avid reader. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I have my nook is sitting up there, and mm -hmm. that took me a little bit. I love to, I, I like the uh, hardbacks, you know, and and my books, but I just love to read, so I can't wait to get a hold of it. And well, get let me go that. on record to say that Ron Moore was right once in our marriage. That what? about, about sure, two thousand. Idea first. <laughs> about two thousand. He purchased the domain name AmericanEbooks.com. And he had this crazy idea that he was going to electronically publish books and people would read them on the, their computer. And I said to him, that is the craziest <laughs> thing I've ever heard of. No one will ever put down that hardback book with those pages in that. They will never read a book on a computer. So I, I would like to just confess by saying he was right. Well, that was once. once. You see, Kim, it's not going to happen You see again. what a lovely wife, is. she gives him credit where credit is due. Well, honey, if you're right one time, I'll give it to we you. We all know that he's been right more than once. We all know that. But she's given him credit for this one. But we all well, know he's been was, right many and more It was a hard thing for me to put down that book now. And, and when I first got the notebook, Joe, well, he did that. That was a good thing, but you weren't right about it. I mean, you just did. He bought was the right. Nook I said, Christmas. you will like this. Right. For Christmas, and I just, at first I was very, I was like, no, I mean, because I really enjoy, and at first, at first I still, my favorite authors, I would still buy them, and the, but after, you know, I've got 85 or 90 books right at my fingertips, it goes everywhere with me, and after a little bit, it's kind of like, oh, you know, oh. The only <laughs> bad thing about it, though, is. I get the newspaper on it, I mean, well, you know. I the, the only bad thing is that if, let's say she leaves that somewhere, <laughs> this has happened, so she buys the book, but she leaves the nook. 
So then she has her phone, so she has to, ooh, I don't have my Nook, so I gotta buy it again on the phone. So she's bought, you bought a book twice. No, that was, I bought the, I bought the paperback on the way back from the, it was the Hunger Games. I left it at my mom's but condo. But you bought it on your phone, too. Let's no. don't argue in front okay, of Okay, we won't. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> but no, you don't buy yes, the book twice. She bought it twice because I she told me. I just bought it in hardback. Well, then you bought a hardback <laughs> copy of what you had. All right, Joe. I'll, I'll correct you later because you're not right. Uh, I'm always right. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, but I'm excited about your book. I really am. I mean, you know, you know, I think I've been, that you'll be really. It. You're going to be surprised the the participation that the people here locally, the the men especially, that you know they were in Vicksburg and uh, at the end of the war, men from this area, men from Calhoun and Charleston, Tennessee, escorted President Davis to to go surrender, and when they got right outside, I believe it was Washington, Georgia, he stops and he had all the money that the Confederacy had at that time, and they divided it, one for you, one for you, and they all got like $28 in gold pieces. And then you see in their diaries and things how they spend that money to get home. Really? So it's- That is it's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, I'm it's, excited. It brings it really local, you know, and, and some of the families here locally still live on those farms. And, oh, sure. And you can find those guys buried uh, all in the same section up in, up in uh, Fort Hill, and yeah. and it's an interest. It's been a really interesting journey. Yeah, and and I, you know, I don't think people realize how much work there is involved in putting together a book like you did. You just talking mm -hmm. about how easy you thought it was at the beginning, but then as you get into it, I mean, that had to take that had to just overwhelm. Well, you. you know, and when you think six or seven years ago, I could barely send an email, and I've learned to use Word and put the pictures in there and and to to you know put it all together, and you can just get it all fixed up and send it to the, you know, an online printer or a local right. printer. It's amazing now how much you can learn when you have mm -hmm. to. I mean, that's how mm -hmm. I was. I mean, you know, but I'm yeah, still like the last to. person in the world that's using publisher because once I learned it, it's like you know I don't want to go any further. But that mm -hmm. and all the pictures you have, you have like 250. You said pictures mm -hmm. are in the book. A lot of the pictures I found on Ancestry.com, and I asked okay. the relatives if I could use them. Oh, that's great. A lot of the pictures came from uh, the Library of Congress. There's there's pictures there okay. and. Um, from family history books. So I've talked to a lot of people about I'm this sure book. you have. I I'm have. sure you have. And the, the new uh, digital libraries are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Cleveland State has one. You can go right. to their uh, Cleveland State's library and click on digital library and see a lot of local pictures. Tennessee has the same thing. Um, a few families had a lot of copies of old letters um, that they let me retype and put in the book. And, and it's such a wonderful subject. I don't think people realize in our area, we talk about this is the buckle of the Bible, but well, this is like the buckle of the Civil War belt too. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of things happened around here. There were not, you know, in my mind, it was gone with the wind. Yeah. You know, you had all these big plantations mm -hmm. and all these big slave owners. Well, these were people, just ordinary people on little farms that had no slaves. And they would not have gotten involved in this political stuff, but they were invaded. Yes. Right. To them, it was the war of northern aggression, right. not, the, not you know right. about anything else. And so they fought because someone came here to take something they had. Right. Something they had. Right. right. And I was really surprised when I was, when I was doing the index. I was really amazed at the number of people with the Irish names. You know, I just have McClures and Macbeths and Mc. Kenny's and and I'm thinking, wow, you know they had really uh, the the immigrants who had come here and established themselves were ready to take up arms. Yeah, and probably the most um, I guess heroic people, and I had never realized it till I, I had written the book, were those people that the flag bearers. I mean, you were in the you were the person right, that everybody in your group followed. You could not carry a weapon because you had, had both hands on that flag. flag. And so there they'd go into battle, and I know that one of our groups here locally said there were 900 bullet holes in their flag when they wow. left Pittsburgh. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is just, uh, it's just, oh, it's just amazing. Well. It's, um, and Debbie knows stuff about it. She wrote it down. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> she wrote well, it down. I, I can't read a lot of it. stuff. It's just people's obituaries and newspaper articles and their diaries and their letters and their stories. And your love for history. Yes. Put it all together. There we yeah. go. That's now, right. don't forget. Come into yeah, us. and you can hear them and, yeah, and listen to them every Saturday morning at um, on Whoop 99.9 .9 at 10 until noon.
Every Saturday. We have morning. Eddie Cartwright coming on this week, and he's oh, going to talk yeah. about growing up on the east side of of Cleveland and going to the assembly yes. and Dooley's ice cream right. and uh, all those wonderful things, the stores that used to be in that community mm -hmm. and the old mom and pop stores and grocery stores. So I think it's going to be one of our better shows. Yes, oh, yeah, and he's good. he That's is uh, he's. Of course, everybody knows Eddie Cartwright. And what Eddie is like, kind of like Ron, what he doesn't really remember, he'll just make up. That's right. Uh, but yeah, but that'll that be an interesting, interesting show. show. That, that will be a very interesting show. And we do appreciate you coming by. And we want you to come back when the book is finally yes, out. We'll I will tell be back. people where they can pick it up. And, and I'd like to pre order. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'd like to have it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very interesting book. Debbie I'm doing Moore. a lot, you know, on this show. I mean, I've gotten. Uh, Jewelry. jewelry and now a book. I mean, you know, hey, you Ron, you got a you got a Joe's Christmas, Christmas keychain. <laughs> only thing left <laughs> to do is show. to find that memory that you lost somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing left. <laughs> but, it's my mind. Well, I, yeah. I lose Inviting. my mind all the time. That's all right. But uh, in any case, Debbie Moore, uh, oh, as we said, local author, remember, be looking for the book, Confederate Voices, out soon. We'll let you know here on Tennessee Valley That's this morning. Right, You'll will. also hear on Whoop Radio when uh, you can pre-order. Can they pre-order like now, can they give you a call and pre-order, or when are you going to start that? It will be on our website. It's not Probably quite there website. yet. Okay. Uh, www.oldtowncleveland.com. As soon as okay. I nail down that price, it will be on there and available for sale. Okay. Good deal. That's something else new that oh, you do. Oh, I know. That you have to do it. You've <laughs> got to get the PayPal thing going on. Yeah, got it all going. You've got to get it on there. All right. We're going to be back. We've got Ron Moore in the house. That's right. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll find out a little bit about some local history uh, as he has it. When we come back on Tennessee Valley this morning, right after this, stay tuned. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive-thru. Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship.
Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. We're just thinking up a million and one ideas. The plastic ones that's wouldn't work, right. though, would they? No, that's no, what I said. You have to the old-fashioned old one. And you just, put, you you just, just wheel it right over the fire, and you put everything yeah. in, and it cooks right there. It's a great idea. Right. I was like, you know. And, he said, and then when you're done, you just it out, and you throw all your stuff in it, and you just wheel it back home. Take your grill with you. <laughs> anyway, Ron and I are going to make a million here in just a few weeks. Well, you missed um, the e-books thing, though. I, I know. did. I she would have supported you. She was right you. there. He Debbie was right there. supported you and got behind you. She would have pushed you all the way to the top. Have you, you know noticed that. the day that the guests got better looking as we come all day? <laughs> well, <laughs> not to mention they work harder. Yes. We're, you know, we're gonna <laughs> go, Ron's totally behind the operation of Confederate Voices. He said that when we were in break. <laughs> yeah. He's the one that got, ah, whatever. Debbie, we all know. <laughs> But no. not fooling anybody. And it's Ron, in I tell here. you what, though, Ron does repeat things well that Debbie tells him when she says this is what happened, and you repeat it well. That's right, it's like a I parrot. Yes. But uh, we are joined by Ron Moore, of course, of Ron and Debbie Moore from Old Town Cleveland, and Ron is going to tell us about some local history, which today we're going to talk about what? Hare Conrad. Okay. Hare Conrad. Hare Conrad was right, a Cherokee here in Bradley County uh, okay. very early, and you talked about this being. The Bible Belt for the, uh, I mean, the buckle of the Bible Belt and the buckle of the Confederacy. Well, it's also the the buckle of the uh, Cherokee, Cherokee Indians Indian. here. That's and, true and, too. And this That's gentleman true. was a uh, uh, lived out on what was called uh, uh, Hare Creek, and uh, today we call it Harris Creek. Uh -huh. Okay. Which is out by Candy's Creek. Samuel Candy's owned the farm out there, and Hare Conrad lived there, and he had. 640 acre farm there, which I believe is a square mile, 640 acres. Uh, and he lived on a little uh, creek called Kakuku, which later became Candy's Creek, uh -huh. which is C-A-N-D-Y, -A -A Candy's, possibly Creek. Nowadays, you'll see it on the map as Candy's, C-A-N-D-I-E-S. Uh, yes. yeah. so, uh, but it started uh, as Kakuku. Kakaku. So wait, so Kakaku. the correct is C-A-N-D-Y-S yes. is the correct way. Apostrophe S. Right. Okay. Well, and then Hare, uh, Hare Creek, I'll tell us now, Harris Creek. Right, okay. Well, at least that's the belief. I think if you look at the map, uh, Hare Codrad Cabin is still standing on Blackwood Farm out here. Okay. It was saved by the uh, Miss Neal out there. And uh, uh, the... Uh, he held many positions, Hare Conrad and the Cherokee Indians. Uh, first thing, you he was a delegate of the uh, Mochi District uh, to uh, the New Echota in 1827, and they wrote the Constitution of the Cherokee Indians there, which was patterned quite a bit like the uh, uh, United States Constitution. Right. So, uh, and, you know, the Indians tried to adapt to the English settlers. Oh, yeah. and, uh, look, so, what, that, look what they you know, got they for did, it. Did, didn't work out <laughs> right. that good. It didn't work out uh, so well. Then in 1833, he was appointed and uh, to a committee and uh, went to Washington to protest to Congress about the treatment the Cherokees were getting down in Georgia. If you'll remember, there was a uh, Supreme Court ruling against uh, 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 the people in Georgia taking over the Cherokee land. And it's the only Supreme Court judgment that, that I know that was never enforced. Andrew Jackson just did not enforce that law, and so uh, the people in Georgia kept coming into uh, the Cherokee land, which pushed them now into what we know yeah. as Tennessee and Bradley County. In 1836, uh, Conrad was a member of the National Committee of the Cherokee Nation, uh, and they were after General Wool for his treatment of the uh, Indians down in Georgia, and that then they were moving here, taking over their guns. Uh, and then very, one of the most important things is that Conrad Hare uh, was appointed by Chief John Ross, the general chief of the Cherokee Indians, to take the very first group at the beginning of the Trail of Tears was led by Conrad Hare. And they left Rattlesnake Springs. They'd done that uh, see, April 28, 1838. Uh, he left with 640 people. There's some question about uh, I think John Ross roster had on the 720, but the U.S. Army said he left with six, 654 people, 36 wagons, uh, 288 riding horses. Uh, they arrived in Oklahoma 143 days later. Uh, there were nine children born along the way. Wow. 54 people died and 24 deserted from the uh, march. Uh, Hare was paid for his leadership role by the United States government. They promised him five dollars a day to lead his uh, people out there. Did they pay it? He got uh, 
about $170. It got paid for 34 days. So once again, the uh, U.S. <laughs> government did not stick up to their word. <laughs> as Imagine, that. And, uh, Imagine that. Imagine that. There was, uh, I've got $6 million something dollars set aside by the U.S. government to give to the Cherokees for the buying of their land and things like that. And We're still holding on to that? Uh, I don't, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where they're. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> uh, but uh, those were very prominent families, you know, and if you go to uh, Cherokee today, that Con Hedr uh, Con Herr Conrad. Herr Conrad. I'm, saying, I'm about to do German. Herr Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Bachuber. Conrad uh, Bachuber. Three or four of the families that come right from here in Bradley County are the prominent families of the Cherokee uh, now. Uh, and uh, uh, Conrad uh, uh, Conrad had uh, three children and three male children, and they. Uh, there are a lot of people named after them now, and uh, those three children was Terrapin Head Conrad, Rattling Gord Conrad, <laughs> and Young Wolf Conrad. And later on, they just dropped those the Conrad off there and just became, of course, Young Wolf. Rattling Gord, I'd Rattling like to. I mean, Gord. Right, yeah, there's a name for you, Rattling. When you those of you that are expecting out there, you might want to consider yeah. Rattling Gord. Rattling Gord from Gabon. He's a Gabonian. <laughs> right. So, but if you take all the things that happened with. Uh, the Cherokee Indian here, and you know, it's a tremendous story that's happened here. Once again, I don't think we do enough to even start to use that history. Right. That's and the true. tourism dollars that are available, you know, we got Bakker coming in, they say the Germans are very interested in Indian culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we just don't do enough here. I'm, no, we it's don't. To the point of not doing anything. Anything, you're uh, we, right. Uh, luckily that we have some people who bought land, like Colonel Corn, who saved Red Clay Park. Mm -hmm. Uh, some other people who have bought land and then give it back to the Indians or sold it to national park services and things. So uh, that's really, really important. So. Yeah. It's just, I think that we're just such a young country that we just have not seen really the, really the respect that needs to be, I, like the opening for the Olympics. I mean, that went back so far in the history of that nation and that country, you know, to go there that we've just not really done that here. I guess maybe because we, we were so new and after so much time that we didn't appreciate it. But now, we're starting to see, hey, we've really got some great roots and some great stories and some history that needs to be preserved and to, you we'll know. Well, see, if we go back and remember all that, then it's going to bring the attention back to the fact that we owe them, like, would you say, $600 million or $6 million? <laughs> Just $6 million. Just yeah. six million. And so it's like, <laughs> ah, yeah. but, but, the, but the deal is, is that when we, we did, we came in here, and, and we always talk about it. If there's ever a people... Uh, there's a lot of people, I'm sure, that our government has wronged through, through 200 years, whatever. But if there's ever a people that were really wronged, I mean, the, the Cherokee Indians, the Indian oh, Nation, right. we just... Um, and, we and just they, brought disease. And you know and what? And, and, and to be honest, other than the little bit of fighting that they did there for at, the, at the beginning, they really kind of took it on the chin. Well, they, they fought for us, too, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. The battle against the creation. Sure exactly. Did. And, and the, the, what it is, the Cherokees did not, did not have a very good immigration program. Oh. Right, right, right. Well, you know what? They, they lied at all they these immigrants. Right, they let them all in. And, and I they will should say, have been lying in the shores. But, but what I've heard is that we, that never would have happened. We would have, the Indi would have completely obliviated, obliv how did, was the word? Obliviated us obliv if they'd have been more, um, what do I want to say, organized. Yep. Because of their lack of organization, they were they warriors. They fought among their but, own but, tribes. But the but, Cherokees uh, were very, uh, uh, were not a very uh, warring type. No, of no. And, and a lot of the Indians weren't. They really, no, the only time not. that they fought were to protect their own land. Which anybody would do. Right. So. And, and if, if Andrew Jackson, I think, had supported the Supreme Court ruling and stopped them in Georgia, this probably may not have happened. It may have continued on because yeah. right. the yeah. white man had continued to encroach into the into the area. Right. Yeah, we didn't stop until. We All right, I think we're out of time. <laughs> Ron, thank you so much for being with us, right. and, and we, of course, we'll be back. Ron will be back with us next uh, next Wednesday. We want to thank Debbie Moore and Regina Williams. Have yourself a good Wednesday. We'll see you next time on Tennessee Valley this morning. Thanks for watching today. <laughs>